Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikens, and in a previous video I showed you how to create custom section headers uh, with code. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom section headers for the table view using the storyboard. In the code, I showed you how to create the custom section headers uh, using two delegate methods, view for header and section and height for header and section. And with just those two, you can create custom section headers. All right, now we're going to get rid of this. Actually, let's just comment it out for now. And if I run it now, we'll see that the custom section headers are gone. Actually, they'll still be there, uh, but there won't be anything in it. It'll just have the, the height of 45, just like this. Okay, so there's nothing there. All right, so what we want to do is we want to go to the storyboard, and we want to create a prototype cell. The prototype cell will be our custom section header, but you might be thinking prototype cell for section headers. I thought you only use prototype cells for for cells, for regular uh, row cells. Yes, you do, but you can also use them for section headers or section footers. It's just a view, and all you're going to do is dequeue that prototype cell and show it for your section header instead of your rows. So we created one prototype cell, and let's start customizing it. Uh, before, we had an orange color for the background, so let's set that orange color. Uh, let's see. Actually, it might be here. Yeah, here we go. Still saved. All right, so there's our orange. Now we also had a image and a label, so let's add those. Image. And the image, let's resize that using the properties here. We started at 5 and 5, and it was only 35 by 35, right? Okay, good. That looks right. And let's add our label. And for that, let's, yeah, that's good. And we'll stretch that out to the end there. And to set these up, because it's just they're just controls in a view, uh, I'm just going to use constraints. So we want to give it a trailing and leading. Let's add those two. And let's add the constraints for our image. 5 by 5. We want the height and the width. And I'm going to update the frames to the new constraints just to make sure it's in the right place. Okay, there we go. The, image, the label, it's, it's reds, meaning there's a problem, so we're missing a constraint. Uh, we know the, the leading and the trailing, but it doesn't know where it should be vertically. So let's tell it we want it vertically in the container. We'll update it. There we go. It moved it up a little bit. All right, so everything's in the right place. And let's go to, now that we have our prototype cell, uh, you know what we're also going to need is a uh, reference ID. Uh, a reuse identifier. Now, since we're going to be dequeuing this, in our previous uh, identifier, we use the word cell. So let's give this a different name. We'll call this header cell. And when we dequeue it, we're going to use this um, this identifier. You need an identifier because you can have you can have uh, many prototype cells. And when you dequeue a cell, you have to know which prototype cell you want to dequeue. So if you have 100 prototype cells, which you could have, you have to be able to identify which one you want to dequeue and populate. Okay, good. So what we want to do is we need to dequeue that. So let's get our cell here. Equals table view. And table view, that's just the uh, one of the parameters that are passed into uh, view for header and section. We're going to dequeue it with identifier, and we called it header cell. Uh, instead of returning a view, we're going to return a cell. We don't need this anymore. All right, let's see if that works. Now, notice we're not setting the image and we're not setting the label. So we do. We now have our prototype cell showing up for our section headers, but there's no image and no label. How do we set those? There's no property, there's no outlet to be able to access that image or the label right now. So we need to add outlets, but we can't add outlets to this view controller. 
Uh, it doesn't work that way. Because we have a separate header, header cell, it's going to need uh, its own class, its own uh, like a view controller, its own backing class. And, it, and in that backing class, uh, we can add the outlets there. So let's add that class now. Uh, I want a Coco Touch class. Click next. And this is the subclass I want. It's going to be a UI table view cell because that's our prototype cell. And we will just call it a header cell. Create. Uh, so it gives us our basic class here. Uh, we won't need these at this time. And what we want to do is we want to create our outlets in this class. So uh, we have a header cell, which is a type of uh, UI table view cell. So if we go to our storyboard and we click on our header cell, we can tell this prototype cell to use that class. That'd be a, of a type of this class now, which inherits UI table view cell. So it's going to like that. Now we want to add our outlets there. Let's just build this first, make sure everything is okay. Build succeeds, okay, good. So I'm gonna show the assistant editor so we can just drag and drop and let's give ourselves some more room here. Okay, good, so notice it, it does pick the, uh, the header cell. And sometimes I built it first before I clicked on the assistant editor because sometimes if you don't do that and you click on the assistant editor, it's still gonna go back to our view controller. So let's drag and drop this. Okay, see, this is another problem that I have too, uh, that I've noticed in the past. It doesn't notice. It, it, nothing will happen if I drag and drop it into this class. Like it doesn't, still doesn't recognize it for some reason. Um, you can try it here. Nothing happens. I'm not quite sure why this happens. Uh, in order to fix this, what I have to do is um, I just have to quit uh, Xcode and start it up again. Again, I don't know why that happens. All right, let's try it again. Let's go in here. Let's grab our image. See now that this is what I was expecting uh, would happen. And we'll call this uh, let's call it header image. Okay, good. And we want one for our. Oops, I think I have the constraint selected there. Let's check. Yeah. Let's drag it from here. It's easy. Okay, UI label, there we go. And we'll call this header label. Pretty simple. All right, now that we have our outlets, we can actually reference them and assign them the correct image and the correct text for our label. Let's go back to, we can turn the assistant editor off and let's go back to our view controller. Now, we call their image header image and header label. But you'll notice if I try to access those properties, there isn't. There isn't a header, label, or image. That's because when I DQ it, I'm DQing a type of, like if I actually go in here, it's DQing a UI table view cell, which doesn't have those two outlets on it, of course. What I want to do is I want to DQ it as my header cell that I created, uh, this custom class right here, header cell. So I want to say as header, oops, spelled it wrong. Header cell, there we go. I think I need an exclamation point there. Uh, there we go, they'll add it for me. Now when I try to access those two properties, I still don't see them. Okay, this is another problem <laughs> that I've had with Xcode. Let's try, uh, let's try building it first. Okay, everything is okay there. And let's try to access that property again. There we go, now they show up. So it looks like you have to build it every once in a while if you don't see your, your properties showing up. All right, we're gonna set the uh, image first. Now the header image, that's a UI image view. So we want the image of the UI image view that we're gonna set. And which image should we set it to? Well, we were setting it up here. So let's just grab that code. This is an array of images. So again, for section, when we come to the first section, this this prop this parameter here is going to be zero, so that means we're going to grab uh, index zero from this array, and again this array is right here and it has three images in it: our mummy, our devil, and our ghost. 
So the section zero will grab the mummy, section one, or the second section will grab the devil, and the third section will grab the ghost. Now let's set our label, cell dot header label right there. And we want to set the text property. And again, we're going to get that from the section titles array. And we're going to use the section as the index. All right, now let's see what we have here. There we go. So now it looks exactly like the way we had it before when we were creating an image and a label uh, in our code. Now we just have everything in a prototype cell and uh, we're setting it uh, using properties of our custom header cell class. There you go, I hope you learned something there. We can refactor this and take it a step further. Uh, you can stop the video at this point if you learned what you wanted to learn. Stay tuned and keep watching if you want to learn a little bit more. I'm going to cover the best practices and I'm going to show you some more customization. So if you want to keep watching, you can and learn a little bit more. So the first thing I'm going to do is normally when you have data and you set it in your view controller, um, here um, I'm manipulating the UI uh, by setting it some image and setting it uh, an image and a title. Normally I don't like to do this. Normally what I like to do is something like this, uh, where I say, say the cell dot, and I might say like, um, you know, setup cell, and I'll pass in what I, everything it needs, and the cell is responsible for handling the images and the titles. So like, for example, so I might pass in the image and the text. And from here, the cell will be responsible for setting it up. I don't have this method set up yet, but let's add that now. Uh, let's see, I, I copied it, so I'll just set up cell. And so remember, I'm passing in an image. Just call it image. And it's a UI image. And we're passing in a string for the label, and I'll just call that uh, uh, like label text. And I just type string. And I'm going to set the header image dot image equals image. And we'll set the header label dot text equals label text. Alright, just like that. Uh, let's see, there's a problem here. What doesn't it like? Oh no, I guess it's fine. Okay, so now, the reason why I do this is because I want to make the cell, the header cell, responsible for uh, setting all of its own properties. In here, if I want to add any customization, or I want to like uh, change anything about the text or the image, uh, this will be responsible for it, uh, the cell itself, not, not the view controller. So now let's get rid of these lines. And we have setup cell. Let's see, it needs something here. Oh, okay, I see. Just adding the parameter names in there. All right, let's run this and make sure that works. All right, good. Everything's still working the same way. Now you can see, you know, we don't need this code anymore. You, but you can see the the amount of code uh, that you save by doing it this way too. Uh, it's kind of cleaner. Um, if you want to know anything about how the cell is set up, you just you just command click in there, and you can learn more about that. Uh, but if you don't if you don't care, then it, it's it's pretty simple. It's kind of a black box. Okay, now the second thing I want to show you too is you can have more than one prototype cell, and you can customize and DQ uh, different prototype cells uh, depending on the situation in your application. So let's create a couple more here, and maybe for your section headers. Um, you want each one to be different for each section header. You don't have to DQ the same one over and over again. You can add different ones. So they all have the same reuse identifier, so that's not causing a problem because when you DQ a cell, uh, it won't know which one to DQ because they all have the same uh, identifier. So let's give them unique identifier names. Uh, we'll call this zero. And for this one, we'll call it one, header cell one. And for the third one, we'll call it header cell two. All right, now they all have a unique name. 
uh, but they're still all the same. So let's customize them a little bit to differentiate them. Maybe what you want is uh, the background color changes for each one. Um, for your section headers, maybe you want the first one to be orange, but the you want them to be a little bit lighter as you go down. So let's go to this one here, and for the color, uh, let's let's make it a little bit lighter as you go down. So this maybe this one is seventy five percent, and maybe this one is fifty percent. The opacity is fifty percent. Uh, and maybe the label uh, here, maybe it, the, the label gets smaller too. So let's start off with a larger label. And uh, we'll keep that one 17. We'll make this one smaller. So it kind of adds emphasis. Maybe the first section you want the user to notice the most. It, maybe the first section has the most importance. So it's a, it's a darker color and it's a bigger label. And it'll draw the user's attention to your first section. So now we have to update our code because we need to dequeue the right cell. Right now there's no prototype cell called header cell because we added a 0, 1, and 2. So for uh, the first section, uh, we want to dequeue header cell 0 like that, right? But we want it to change per section. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to section. So now for the first section, it'll be zero, so we're going to DQ header cell zero, and so on. Let's see what we get. There we go. So you can see the first section here, section header. It has the larger font, the darker color, and it gets lighter as you go down, and the font gets smaller too as you go down. All right, so that's it for, about, for customizing section headers. I hope you learned something new from this, that you can have multiple prototype cells, you can use prototype cells for section headers, section footers, and as well as your prototype rows, the cells for your rows. I will post links down to the bottom for my, my previous tutorial where we created the custom section headers in code. And also with, with doing it this way too with the prototype cells, it also saves on a lot of code. So you can create and visually see all of your prototype cells for your section headers. And imagine if we had to create each one of these prototype cells in your in our code. You know, it can it can add a lot of code for your uh, view for a sec header and section because you're going to create different views uh, every time. And this this method right here will get very long. But if you do it this way, the code remains small, and you can visually see all of your prototype cells as you keep adding them. So that's another uh, advantage. But you know, use the way that you need uh, appropriately for your project. Again, thank you for watching. My name is Mark. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you.